welcome to Espresso Mechanics. In this video, I'll walk you through setting up the espresso station and the step-by-step -step process for preparing espresso. In order to start preparing espresso, we're gonna need a few things. First, we're gonna need three clean towels. These towels are gonna be used for three very specific things. And so we wanna make sure we place them in such a way that we only use them for those three specific things. The first towel is gonna to be used for cleaning our portafilter baskets. Because we're only using this towel for cleaning our portafilter baskets, I wanna place this near the knock box where we're going to knock out our spent espresso grounds. The second of our three towels is gonna to be used for cleaning the counter and drip tray. We're just using it to clean up after ourselves if there's any drips on the drip tray or on the counter. The third towel is gonna to be used for cleaning our steam wands when we steam milk. Now this towel needs to be used for only that purpose. It needs to be sanitary. This towel is gonna to stay on a saucer on top of our espresso machine. I like to keep this towel lightly damp and keep it folded in half and in half again. This way I know that I have at least four layers of towel between the steam wand and my hand when I go to clean it. So I'm gonna keep it just lightly damp on top of the espresso machine. We're also gonna need shot glasses, two digital scales, one scale I'm going to use to measure the weight of the ground coffee. The other scale is going to be used to measure the weight of the espresso shot during the extraction process. We're also going to need a tamper with a flat base and a rubber tamp mat for our counter. Finally, if your espresso machine does not have a built-in timer, you're also going to need a separate timer to time your extraction. Of course, we're also going to need coffee in our grinder. I would recommend filling the hopper with as much as it will hold from the same roast date. You don't want to mix two different roast dates in the same hopper. And then run one cycle on the grinder to get fresh beans in the grinding chamber. Now that our station is set up, let's run through the mechanics of preparing espresso. There are 12 steps to our espresso preparation process. We're gonna run through them one by one and then put it all together. The first step is making sure you have the right vessel ready to go. Let's say I'm making a latte. I'll select a preheated cup from the top of my espresso machine if I'm making it to stay, or if I'm making it to go, I make sure I have the right cup ready. The second step is to remove the portafilter from the group head and flush the group head with clean water for one to two seconds. This removes any loose grounds that are stuck on the dispersion screen and it pulls fresh water into the group head mechanism. Our next step is going to be filling the portafilter basket with freshly ground coffee. There's actually several steps to this part of the process. The first thing that I wanna do is clean my portafilter basket using my dedicated portafilter towel. This is a really important step. Even if this already looks clean, it's really important that it also be dry. So be sure to get in this habit as part of the process of filling the basket with ground coffee. Now that my portafilter basket is clean and dry, the next thing that I wanna do is zero out or tear out the scale that I'm gonna to use to weigh the dose so that I can only weigh what's going into the basket and not the portafilter itself. So I'm going to put the portafilter on my dose scale here and turn it on and then tear it out. And that way it will zero out for the weight of this portafilter. And it's really important that you tear out the scale for each portafilter that you're using because they don't weigh the exact same amount. Next, I'm going to activate the grinder by just pushing the portafilter against the activation switch. And it will run for the preset amount of time that I've selected. At this point, I'm going to check my dose by putting the portafilter with the ground coffee back on the scale before doing anything else. I'm going to adjust my dose so that it's within 0.2 grams of my target dose, which we'll talk about in the dial in process. Now that we have our dose measured out to our target, the next thing that we need to do is distribute the ground coffee in the basket. This is a really important step that involves trying to spread out the ground so that you have an even density of ground coffee throughout the basket. There's a few different techniques for doing this. Sometimes people use dedicated tools to distribute the coffee. Sometimes people use a swiping technique that involves swiping your index finger across the surface of the basket. The technique that I recommend is one that involves no contact with the ground coffee, and it's just tapping the side of the portafilter to level out the mound of grounds so that it's nice and flat, and we can go and tamp the coffee with it already being evenly dense throughout the basket. So the technique is to just gently tap the side of the basket, keeping in mind that this is going to be hot, and you should see the grounds level out 
as you're tapping. If you notice the ground's sloping to one side or another, you can gently angle the basket so that gravity does the work of moving the grounds from the high side to the low side in your basket. Another technique that you can use to help you distribute the ground coffee in the basket is to tap it on this platform of the grinder when you're done grinding or on your tamp mat before you go to tamp. I would recommend just experimenting with a combination of these tapping techniques to develop a habit so that you can do this process very consistently and very quickly. It should only take a couple of seconds to distribute the grounds in the basket. The next step in our espresso making process is to compress this now evenly distributed bed of grounds using our tamper. Now for this part of the process, it's really important that we develop a technique that allows us to compress the grounds evenly or levelly, but also to do it consistently and ergonomically. This is a part of the process that really impacts the extraction, and it also can cause some wear and tear on the barista's arm, wrist, and shoulder and back if they're not careful about the technique that they use to compress the grounds. So for tamping, it's really important for us to pay attention to form. I'm going to demonstrate the form that I recommend using my right hand, which is my dominant hand. That's the hand that most baristas tend to use in tamping, but you can use whichever is more comfortable for you. So the form that I recommend is something like this. Hold out your tamper with your thumb on top as though you were holding out a flashlight maybe, and then turn your wrist 90 degrees so that your thumb is facing, for me, to the left. If you're using your left hand, your thumb would face to the right. And then you're going to form a right angle with your elbow and bring your forearm down so it's perpendicular to the counter. It's really important that we try to compress the grounds evenly, and part of this process is making sure that we are applying force in a way that's perpendicular to the surface of the grounds that we're compressing. So with my tamping arm at a right angle and perpendicular to the surface of the counter, I'm going to stand perpendicular to the counter that I'm using and use my non-dominant hand to stabilize the portafilter flat against the tamping mat. I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that the bottom of my portafilter is flat, so it sits nice and stable on the counter. If you're using a spouted portafilter, it's really important when you go to tamp your grounds that you position the portafilter on the counter using the edge of the portafilter and not the spouts, which can be easily damaged. And I'm essentially going to form a box with my left arm holding the portafilter, my right arm perpendicular to the surface of the counter, and I use my thumb and index finger to judge how level the base of the tamper is in the portafilter relative to the rim of the basket. And once it feels like it is level, I will apply a little bit of force to compress the grounds. There are a lot of misconceptions out there about how much force is needed to tamp correctly. And you actually don't need that much force. In fact, using too much force is a good way for baristas to injure their wrists or shoulders or backs. And it also tends to lead to inconsistencies. So notice that when I tamp, I'm not putting a lot of body weight into it. I'm not rolling my shoulder into it or bending my back into it. I'm just pushing down with my arm perpendicular to the counter. When you're done tamping, you can check how level it is just by looking at the surface of the grounds relative to this ring on the inside of the basket. There are a few common techniques that you may have seen that you definitely want to avoid when tamping, things that we would not recommend doing. One of them is tapping the side of the portafilter with your tamper, like that. The reason for that is that it will eventually cause some damage to your tamper base and the side of your portafilter, and it's not really any more effective than just using your hand. Another common technique that I would not recommend incorporating into your habits is what's called polishing or grooming the puck, which is basically turning or spinning the tamper on the puck, either as you're tamping or afterwards spinning the tamper like that. This doesn't actually do much of anything for the tamping process, and it can also introduce some inconsistencies if you don't do that exactly the same every single time. Our next step is a pretty simple one. We just want to clear away any loose grounds that might be on the wings or the rim of the portafilter basket just by using a quick swipe with our free hand. This helps prevent loose grounds from building up on the gasket inside the group head, which will cause problems with forming a seal with the portafilter. Our next step is to lock the portafilter into the group head. And it's really important during this process that you're careful not to accidentally hit the portafilter against the drip tray or the group head. Doing that can cause cracks to form in the bed of compressed grounds, which will cause water to flow through those cracks during the extraction process. 
Our next step is to activate the group head as soon as possible after locking the portafilter in place. You usually have a few seconds before anything comes out of the portafilter, so I use that time to position a shot glass and scale below the portafilter. During the extraction process, I will observe things like flow rate, which is something we'll talk more about during the dial-in process. And I will be sure to keep an eye on my yield scale or my shot scale so that I know when to stop the extraction process. In this case, I'm using a machine that has auto volumetrics, so it will stop for me. If you're using a manual machine, you will have to stop your shot when it reaches the desired yield. So you'd have to keep an eye on your scale and hit the button to turn the group head off when you're about one to two grams short of your target. Our next step in the process, assuming that we have produced a good shot of espresso, would be to use this shot in preparing whatever drink we have in mind. It's really important to pay attention to workflow at this stage in the process because you don't want to have shots sitting on your bar waiting to be used. It's a good idea to use them within 30 seconds or less of when your extraction finishes because they will kind of go stale as they sit. Once we finish making that drink, we're going to reset our bar so that it's clean and ready to make the next drink. So I'll do things, for instance, like rinsing my shot glass. And the next step is to remove the portafilter and knock out spent grounds. While I'm doing this, I'll run a flush or purge cycle on the group head. And I'll hit my portafilter with its spent grounds directly on the bar of the knock box, knocking those spent grounds into a trash can. After I knock out those spent grounds in the knock box, I'll use my dedicated towel to clean the portafilter basket, and then I'm ready to either prepare a shot for another drink, or if I have no drinks to prepare, I'll return the portafilter to the group head to make sure it stays hot between uses. So those are the steps in the espresso making process. I would recommend practicing those one by one, paying attention to form and consistency, and practicing slowly to begin with. And as you build habits, you will build up speed, but it's really important to lay a solid foundation by paying attention to form and consistency to begin with. All right, now that we've gone through the steps in the espresso making process one by one, let's recap by just putting them all together in real time. I'm going to start by grabbing a vessel from the top of my bar. I'm going to remove the portafilter and flush the group head that I'm going to use. Then I'm going to clean my basket with my dedicated towel. I'm going to tear out this portafilter on my scale and grind coffee. I'm going to check the dose. It's within 0.2 grams of my target, so I'm going to go through my distribution step and then tamp the grounds firmly, sealing them in the basket. And I'm going to clean the rim of the basket, insert the portafilter into the group head and start the group head immediately. Then I'll position my shot glass and scale below the portafilter and I'll observe flow rate as it's extracted. When the shot is done, I'll slide my scale out of the way, serve the shot, and rinse the shot glass. Then I'll remove the portafilter, knock out the spent grounds, clean the basket, flush the group head, and then return my portafilter to the group head. Now that we're familiar with the mechanics of preparing espresso, we'll talk next about dialing in our espresso.